Hey guys, so if you guys remember the video on V1 Driver that I did for the iPhone, uh, this app is now available for public release. It's now available for sale on the App Store. And so in this video, I just wanna basically tell you that while well, it's available, and kind of uh, tell you a little bit about the app, how it works, and uh, kind of how it compares to maybe some of the other apps. So the general idea here behind V1 Driver, it's an app designed for the Valentine One. The idea is kind of like Yaa V1, you can use your phone's GPS to add some functionality to the Valentine One to give at things like your uh, your GPS lockouts and your low speed muting. So before, if you wanted to do this, you had to have an Android phone and run Yavi One. So this was only available for Android and using your Android phone, you could basically add your uh, GPS lockouts to the Valentine One to give it lockouts and low speed muting. So it becomes a much nicer detector around town. It can actually learn where your false alerts are and actually mute them over time. Uh, in that way, it actually turns a V1 in many ways into a Max 360. Uh, they're not exactly the same. I mean, this guy still doesn't require a phone and he's got a frequency display here. So, I mean, it's not the exact same thing, but uh, if you like the automatic GPS lockouts, you now have that option available here with the V1 if you're an iPhone user. Uh, now this app, a V1 driver, it's not Yavi 1. It's actually a little bit different than Yavi 1. Um, it does a lot of the same stuff. You've got your GPS lockouts, your low speed muting, but uh, some of the things are actually a little bit different in terms of the alert presentation, the way the features work, uh, etc. So I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison between these apps and also the other iPhone apps that are available um, for the V1. So in order to do this, you're going to need a couple things. Uh, first of all, you're going to need, obviously, a Valentine 1. It does have to be a newer version of the V1 in order to support all the uh, Bluetooth communication stuff. So it has to be version 3.892 or newer. Uh, if you're not sure how to check with your version of the V1, watch this video right up here. It'll actually tell you how to check uh, with your V1 what version that you have. It's just a little trick here with the, uh, the power button. You're also going to need the Bluetooth module. This is it right here. It's the V1 CLE. Now, there's actually two versions of the Bluetooth module. This is the iPhone one. This is the Android one. You'll notice they're different sizes. They use different Bluetooth technology, and you do have to get the iPhone one for this to work. Again, this is called the V1C LE, or V1 Connection Low Energy. Um, there's actually some nice benefits here to the, uh, the iPhone version, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So not the same as the Android one. Get the iPhone one. Uh, also, you're obviously going to need... Um, the app. The app is on the App Store. It's $9.99. You can buy it now. Um, it's going to work for iPhones. Uh, you do need to have an iPhone for this to work. If you have an iPod, it's not going to work properly because an iPod doesn't have a GPS and you need a GPS for the lockouts and stuff. So uh, you're going to need an iPhone. Um, it can be a non-activated iPhone. It doesn't need cell service or data in order to work. So even if you have like an old iPhone that you're not using or even just your normal one day to day, it works really well here. So um, the idea with this one is, again, once you pair it with your V1, you put all this together, uh, it's going to turn your V1 into a better detector for the city. So you're going to get your GPS lockouts. You're going to get your low speed muting. Uh, you'll get a frequency display here. So it'll actually tell you the frequency of the signal that you're getting. Uh, you'll get your voice alerts if you want to hear if it's 34.7 or 35.5. So it adds a lot of really cool functionality. And I like it a lot. One of the things that I actually like best about it, and I like this uh, even a little bit better than um, Yavi 1, is not actually the app itself, but the way that uh, Valentine has actually done their Bluetooth modules. Uh, remember how I mentioned this was called the V1C, and this is the V1C LE? Well, that's actually an important difference. You see, uh, with the V1C LE, that's the low energy one, it's a different communications protocol, and there's two main benefits to it. Number one, it's low energy, so it takes less power from your phone, which is nice, so it saves battery power. The second thing, and probably the more important thing, is the way it connects. You see, when you run um, a V1C or V1 driver here on your iPhone, you just pretty much have to run it once, and as long as you don't reboot your phone or whatever, it's just gonna connect in the background automatically every time. With uh, Yaa V1, that's not the case. You see, when this guy runs, you're actually gonna have to use another app. We usually use Llama, and Llama you can use to actually tell it to pretty much um, automate the V1 stuff. So you can say, you know, when I connect to my car, when the phone gets battery power, or I connect to my car's Bluetooth or whatever, I want you to launch Yavi 1. So you do have to use another app to kind of automate this process. Um, with V1 driver, you don't actually have to do that. Uh, this was also a little bit different than like Stealth Assist, for example, or even uh, V1 connection. With this guy, it can connect really well in the background. So as soon as you turn on your car, this guy connects. This guy connects with the Bluetooth module and you're up and running. It's awesome. So as far as a background app, it actually works really, really well in the background.
Now, when you're actually using the app, the way it'll work, um, let me go ahead and show you a quick example of a signal. So I've got it set up right here. Uh, when we trigger a K-band signal, here it said 24.1, so it tells us the frequency. And you'll see right here a couple things happened. Uh, it'll tell us actually the frequency of the signal, as you can see, 24.134. I can tap right there on the screen to mute it if I want. Uh, it also pops up this little pop-up window here with a bunch of different things that kind of give, give me information as far as what I can do. Uh, so a couple things. We'll just go ahead and tap on that to get rid of it. You'll notice right there it's got those uh, different spikes on screen, right? Now the spikes are really nice. You've got this kind of histogram over time that'll show you as a signal gets stronger and as it gets weaker. Uh, I'm sitting here with a, you know, pocket radar gun shooting radar in my car, so it's going from zero to 100% instantly, right? So you see those spikes like this. Um, in practice, you'll actually see the ramp up and ramp down, so you can actually watch the signal kind of plotted over time, which is super helpful. Uh, additionally, you'll notice there's also this kind of uh, graph that pops up. Let's, let's mute it again real quick. And the idea, and you can see it says a user muted, um, if the signal is weak, it'll be far away. Um, if it's really close, it'll be really close to the bullseye, and you can actually watch as the signal moves closer to you, and then as you pass it, it'll start to move farther away. So you can get kind of a 2D visualization, roughly, of where the signal is. It's not exactly perfect or anything, but the idea is it's taking a look at the signal strength, uh, even things like the ratio of the strength for the front antenna to the strength of the back antenna to figure out, you know, how close you are, all that kind of stuff. So it's doing some cool stuff to kind of sort of plot the location of the signal near you. It's not exactly right, it's not something to be, like, totally trusted on, but it's a cool way of like visualizing what's going on around you, you know? Um, additionally, you do have some cool features that uh, other detectors and other apps even don't have. Um, the way the lockouts work, basically what you do is when you get a signal, you take two fingers and you just swipe over to the right. If you want to unlock that signal, you take one finger and you swipe over to the left. But one thing that I like is... K24.1. Tap on this again. So you can mute it like that. You also have the ability of, if you mute it twice, you see how it says snoozed? What this is nice is let's say you're following a car that has a blind spot monitoring system. What happens is you're gonna be getting that false for a long time up until you part ways with that car, you know? So what you can do is you can say, uh, this is a signal that's snoozed. If I see it again, see how it automatically muted it? It didn't lock it out for me, but it says I'm driving with this car for a while. If I keep seeing this signal, keep muting it for a while until uh, I go away. I don't know exactly how long the snooze is. It's probably in the settings or something, but the idea is uh, you're going to be basically saying this signal is a false alert. I want you to snooze for however long it is until the signal goes away and then return back to normal. So it's a way to actually mute blind spot falses that the V1 can't figure out without relying on lockouts because lockouts don't help for that, you know? So it's actually a really cool feature, this snooze capability. Um, additionally, you have the ability to actually save these alerts. So if you get a cool encounter and you want to maybe uh, save that and maybe overlay it into your video into a dash cam encounter, something you can do is if you swipe up. See these options here at the bottom where it says like save for example? If I wanted to, I could actually save this whole thing and gives me a little info about what that did, but it basically saved that whole event to disk. And then if I wanted to, I could load it later and maybe do like a screen cap of my iPhone, you know, plug it into my computer and record the screen with QuickTime. Uh, and then I could actually save the recording of what this guy is doing afterwards and overlay that onto my video. And now I've got actually a view of what's going on here and I can overlay that into my dash cam footage, which I think is really cool. So that way you don't even have to have your phone actually in the frame necessarily of your dash cam, but you can still have everything that's going on here uh, in the dash cam footage. So I think that's actually pretty slick. So um, a cool shortcut for that actually is if you just press and hold here like that, long press, you can see save success. And that's actually a way to do the same thing without having to do the swipe and save thing. So we've got some really cool functionality as far as how the display works, um, as far as you know, uh, the different saving features and the snoozing capabilities. Looks like it's counting down for snooze. Maybe it's two minutes or something. I don't know. Um, and you've got a couple different options here as far as the settings. Uh, I'm sure in here I could go in and find stuff. I don't actually really know the app too, too well. I've just kind of been playing around with it the past couple days, but you can see we've got our options here for um, customizing the app itself. We can set up our muting parameters for Savvy, which is low speed muting. And we could say, you know, what's the default? How fast do I need to be going? By default, it's 25 miles an hour uh, for Savvy to mute. Uh, I've got it set up where Savvy is muting, you know, K-band, um, but let's say I don't want Savvy to mute K-A-band. I can do that right there. And then I've got the option of either uh, setting it up that way, and then I can always go in later and, you know, set my savvy speed while I'm driving as well, rather than just the default settings. So we'll do it to uh, 25 is good.
so I can overwrite the default settings. So got my savvy slider there. Uh, you can also adjust, you know, your GPS things as far as your lockouts. If you want uh, lockouts to take into account maybe K band, but not KA, you can do that here as well. You can adjust all the advanced stuff for lockouts if you like. Um, you've got, let's see, your auto mute stuff. Um, you know, after what, 12 seconds, it can automatically mute your detector for you. You can adjust different bands. Um, so a bunch of stuff as far as, you know, we'll just run through real quick. You've got your sounds. So um, if you want it to give you the verbal announcement of the frequency, it'll say 34.7 or 24.1, that kind of stuff. Uh, so you've got all of your sound stuff. You can actually have it play over your car's stereo system. It can use the hand-free protocol as well. Uh, so pretty nice there. Um, let's see, presentation settings as far as orientation of your map, all that kind of stuff. Uh, iCloud, this is kind of cool. Um, once you get everything programmed and set up the way you want here, you can actually back up all of your settings to the cloud. So let's say I like what I've got. I can just do backup to the cloud and I say yes. And then there we go. It backed up all of my stuff to the cloud. So if I ever format my phone or get a different phone or uninstall and reinstall the app or whatever, I can just then do a restore from the cloud and then I get all my settings back, which is pretty cool, you know? What else have we got here? Uh, Bluetooth settings, do you want, you know, automatically to run Bluetooth stuff? Yes. Uh, hardware settings, do you want it to automatically put your V1 into dark mode? You can if you want or not. Um, and then just some other debug stuff. And then uh, the demo's pretty slick. The demo will actually show you um, an encounter and kind of, remember the recording stuff that I mentioned? It's basically a saved recording. And then you'll actually get to see an alert here um, actually play through time. So you'll see like as it's gonna then detect the signal, you can actually see the signal ramp up and then ramp down. So KA 34.7, you heard. And you'll notice uh, it's gonna start with the signal kind of farther away like this. And then as we start to get closer and closer, uh, you'll see the signal will start to get closer to us um, over here. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I'll play it here for a couple seconds so you can watch. I'll watch as well. So slowly get closer. You can see it's got the green and the red bar. That's basically telling us uh, if it's red, it means the signal is actually ramping up and getting closer. Um, if it's going green, the signal is actually ramping down, I believe. But basically you can see now the signal is getting uh, a lot closer. Um, if it's on that line there, front antenna and rear antenna strength is the same. Uh, if it's right on top of us like that, it's a really strong signal right on top of us, so it lets us know we're basically passing it. Now you can see the signal is going to start to ramp down, and it's going to start to move away from us. So you'll notice it's getting farther and farther away from this uh, bullseye here. So still a stronger signal, but then starts to get a little bit weaker. And you'll notice there's also a K-band signal that's there that's grayed out. That gray uh, K-band signal is actually a locked out signal. So uh, we've got multiple signals that we're able to view. Um, it's a little bit harder to see the different signals at the same time, um, just due to the way they kind of fly in and out of the screen like that. Um, and if you get a bunch of signals at the same time, it can get kind of messy with everything sort of overlaid on top of itself. So I like the presentation of uh, Yavi 1 a little bit better. It's at a glance kind of cool, but I like all this, I like all this kind of uh, this cool visualization stuff. It's a little bit different. I haven't seen other detectors do it this way before. So it's kind of nifty, you know? And um, that's basically the way the alerts work here on uh, V1 driver. And then you've got your map here. If you want to see where all the alerts are, you can see all your locked out alerts. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So pretty slick. Uh, that's a look at V1 driver. Um, again, it's available on the App Store. It's $9.99. Um, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, let's also talk about how it compares to Yavi 1 because that's obviously going to be like a big comparison, right? How does it actually compare to Yavi 1? Well, let's go ahead and pull that up real quick. Uh, different apps, different apps. Um, Yavi 1 also does the lockouts. I like the alert presentation, which just shows you all the signals kind of line by line and the frequency and everything. Um, if we do the, uh, the demo here in Yavi 1, you'll see the alerts are a little bit different. And uh, I kind of prefer that signal. I'm used to it, you know, but it'll show you the frequency and the strength and the direction and everything. So at a glance, I find this a little bit easier. But uh, you've got, again, different ways of doing all this, you know. Um, as far as the... I think the main difference that we're going to see is actually um, the alert presentation, of course, is different. This guy actually works better in the background because of the stuff that I mentioned with the V1CLE, the low energy. It actually auto connects in the background better, so it makes it a more automated experience running with the V1. You don't have to worry so much about launching the app manually when you first get in the car. This guy actually does a better job than the Android one uh, does to connect to the V1 due to the whole uh, design of the Bluetooth module itself. It's not an Android versus iPhone thing. It's actually 
uh, a V1C LE versus a V1C thing. So uh, I actually like what they did with the iPhone version. They could, in theory, do the exact same thing with the Android one, but Valentine chose not to do that. So that's a difference there. Um, how does this guy compare to the other apps that are out there? Well, there's two main other apps that uh, would be good for the iPhone. The first one is the V1 Connection. That's the app uh, from Valentine themselves. V1 connection. This is what you're going to use to actually program your V1. Whoops, I unplugged it so it's not going to connect right now. But um, a V1 driver actually doesn't allow you to program your V1. So if you want to program basically, you know, set up uh, your junk K fighter, your K band filtering, or if you want to do KA guard off, or program your custom sweeps, all that kind of stuff, you're actually going to need the uh, factory Valentine app. So all of your V1 programming stuff is going to actually be done here through a v1 connection so you'll still need two apps this is going to be your app for programming and then v1 driver is what you're going to use um, instead of the factory valentine app which again you can see it would work but v1 driver would add um, your lockouts and your low speed muting which is the main appeal of it now you've also got a stealth assist which looks like this this is another iphone app it adds your low speed muting capabilities um, just like savvy it's basically a phone replacement for savvy this uh, I think it's, it's actually free now, um, but this guy does your low speed muting. It doesn't do your GPS lockouts. So um, if you are an iPhone user, I would run uh, actually the V1 connection app, not uh, Stealth Assist. We don't need it anymore now that V1 driver is out. Um, again, this guy's free. So if you want the low speed muting, that's cool. But if you want the lockouts, which is the main appeal, you're gonna wanna grab a V1 driver here. So basically V1 driver for day-to-day -day driving and lockouts and V1 connection, the factory app to actually program your V1 initially. So that's basically the uh, the state of the V1. Uh, I like it. Um, do you need to get Yavi yeah, one Not necessarily. I mean, I don't think it's as big of a deal. The main reason that you would get uh, Yavi yeah, one before was to get the GPS lockouts. It was Android only. Well, it still is Android only, but if you wanted the lockouts, you had to get an Android. Uh, now that V1 driver is available, You've got your lockouts available on iPhone, so it's not as necessary to get Yavi yeah, One. Um, I like the alert presentation a little bit better here. I think the visualization here is really cool. I like the ability to save your uh, encounters, and you got this whole kind of plot here on screen, which I think is actually really slick, you know. Um, but realistically, I mean, they both work fine. They both work good in uh, portrait mode. You can rotate them, and they both work just fine in landscape mode. So whatever you want, as far as orienting your phone or choosing which phone you want. I'd say really at this point, just choose whichever one you happen to use. Yavi One is free. Grab it for Android. I've got a bunch of tutorials and all that on this. Um, with this guy, this guy's 10 bucks. If you have an iPhone, get this one. Great app. Um, as far as learning how to use it, there's two main resources. Number one is the app itself. When you start going in here and playing with the different settings, if you're wondering what any of these features mean, if you check the box, it'll actually give you this little pop-up here and it'll tell you what that feature does. So you can kind of go in one by one and you're like, well, I don't know, what does that mean? GPS mute learn laser. Well, I don't think all of them does, but you get the idea on some of them. Like I can do KA, or maybe it only does for, I did it for one of the bands and it doesn't do the rest. Okay, that's cool. So if I wanted to do sound and notify and I wonder what is sound voice use HFP and it'll actually explain the hands-free protocol and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, as you can see, you can go in here and it'll actually tell you um, what all these features do. So the app itself is actually a great way to learn about the app because there's some nice tool tips that are built in like that. Uh, additionally, there's some really good stuff in the uh, V1 driver discussion, uh, discussion thread on RDF. I'll put a link to that as well. Um, in the video description, and that's this huge thread at this point. And it's basically a place where uh, all of us can go in and discuss the app. It was originally started when the app came out for beta. So there's been a lot of discussion at this point. This app is now available for public release, and we're still using the same thread, so there's a ton of discussion. But if you have any questions, that's the place to post. That's the place to read other people's discussions to learn about the app. Um, because the thread is so big, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the very first post on that thread. Uh, uh, MSW Logo, who's the developer of this app, actually has some great information about the features of the app, um, some video tutorials that show you these different features. Um, they demo the lockouts, uh, the alert presentation, kind of explain a lot of the stuff about how it works. So obviously he knows the app better than anyone. He's the one who designed it. So take a look at his thread on RDF. He's got some great tutorials and information about the app. So that's a great resource as well, other than the app itself, to learn about the app 
how to use it, what the features are. So in the video description, you'll find the link to um, that thread on RDF. You'll find the link to where you can download and purchase this app on the App Store. I'll also post a link to where you can actually pick up the, uh, the Bluetooth module. Uh, this V1C LE, this guy. Um, I'll post a link to how you can check what version of the V1 you have. Again, it has to be version 3.892 or newer. So anyways, links in the video description. Check that out for further information. If you guys have any questions, uh, please ask in the uh, video description below or better yet, uh, the thread on RDF. That's where all of us are actually discussing the app. Uh, there's bug fixes, features that are continue to be added, etc. So it's a really cool app. Highly recommended. If you've got an iPhone and a V1, a new version of the V1, and you've got the Bluetooth module, get the app. It's awesome. Definitely worth it. And uh, I think it's a pretty great product. So, yeah, um, there you go. There's a take on a V1 driver and some information about it. Uh, cool. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up, a like. And uh, if you want more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed as well to stay updated to uh, additional videos as they come out. So awesome. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.